Fred was born January 5th, 1924 in Valley Falls, Kansas. He made his major league debut with Cleveland and then in 1951 joined the St. Louis Browns and was with them twice in 1952. He then finished his career with stints at, with the Chicago White Sox and the Baltimore Orioles. Fred currently resides in Corey, Pennsylvania and has been a guest of the Hot Stove Luncheon. He had a seven-year career with a combined batting average of 239. In the spring of 51, I went to spring training again with Cleveland. Two weeks before the season started, they traded me to the Browns. And I did pretty well. I Halfway decent, anyway. Uh, the Browns, that was in 51. And uh, Beck bought the club then in, 50, in the winter of 51. So I played for Beck in, in 52. And that was the game that uh, Goodell, that you saw there. Um, All right, let's talk about August 18th, 1952. In, in reading the book, Beck as in Rec, uh, we understand that Bill Beck, um, help me to the logistics of this, Marty, if you remember, but he contacted Eddie Goodell, a promoter actually, to get a hold of Eddie Goodell in, in a great deal of secrecy, decided that in between games, of the doubleheader with Detroit, he was going to uh, have this grand surprise. He'd uh, convince the uh, sponsors, um, uh, ball, ball, staff, ball, staff. Uh, ball staff, that they were going to have midget beers that day. <laughs> Unbeknownst, the ball staff didn't know what they were doing, but they, they handed out midget beers that day. All across the country, a new generation of owners scrambled to find new ways to fill the seats. The most imaginative owner was Bill Vecht, baseball's greatest showman. He is best remembered for his years at the helm of the hapless St. Louis Browns, where he staged Grandstand Manager's Day, in which fans voted on what the Browns should do next on the field. But his most memorable stunt took place during a game between the Browns and the Tigers. In the first inning, Vex sent in a pinch hitter, Eddie Goodell, a midget who stood just three feet, seven inches tall. His strike zone was said to measure one and one half inches. Vex told Goodell that a man in the stands with a high-powered rifle would shoot him if he swung at a pitch. Goodell obeyed. The Tiger pitcher walked him on four straight pitches all of them high. I once ran into Eddie Goodell. He batted once and he got a walk because the pitcher of the Tigers, Kane, uh, fell off the mound watching it and laughed and so did the catcher, Bob Swift. Eddie got a walk on four pitches. Eddie's, I'm disappointed in Mr. Vec in his little piping voice. He promised me I'd keep on playing baseball. I batted only once, but I got on base. Vec got the press he'd wanted. All I have ever said, Vec told his critics, is that you can draw more people with a losing team plus bread and circuses than with a losing team and a long, still silence. So there you are, August 18th, uh, 1951 or 52? Two. 52. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, we didn't know anything about it. Uh, <clears throat> the way it happened, of course, we were at home. And so we were in, in the field uh, to open the game, to start the game. So our regular center fielder was Jim Delsing. So he, put, he started the game with a substitute center fielder. And, uh, <clears throat> and when we came in off the field, why then, to our turn at bat, why he led off the game with Goodell. And, and then he went down to first base uh, Delsing went in to run for him, and so we had the regular team out on the field the rest of the game, and that's the Goodell. That's what, what was your reaction when... Uh, he comes out and goes up to the plate, and of course the manager says, hey, forget it. You're not on the team. You can't do this. The manager, Zach Taylor, of course, they, they, they knew what was going on. So Zach Taylor comes up, 
He pulls the contract out of his pocket and says, here's his contract, he's on the team. So the, the umpire says, well, you know, I, you know, okay, there's the contract, he's on the team. Can't do anything about it. They, he, just about the game time, why they, they brought him down the, the tube and, and well, he just when he was ready to go out on the field, that's the first we saw him. What was your reaction on the bench? <laughs> well, Beck, you know, you, you play for Beck, you know. <laughs> Eddie Goodell was, was it didn't, didn't, didn't completely shock you then, huh? Well, well, of course, you know, that's that was different. That was really different, you know. Every, <laughs> you know. But but I mean he had he had little mudcat bands walking through the stands playing you know all the time, and he had clowns and, and a Max Patkin. Oh, I remember one time before they or maybe I don't know, was it between double headers or something, they went and laid a a a wooden platform out there, and the Globetrotters were out there. Uh, you know things like that. I. You know, I think things like that are okay. The, uh, the fans could vote. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was Beck, you know. That's <laughs> tell, tell me about that. I'm well, I, I don't think, you know, that didn't go over too big. You know, they... Uh, what did the other team think of all this? Well, the other the team, the, you know, the other team says, well, you know, it's the Browns. You know, they... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, didn't, uh, we didn't have uh, a, a very good team. Uh, but we gave somebody trouble here and there once in a while. Uh, Ned Garver, you know, he, what he win twenty and lose twenty or something like that. But uh, and Ned was Ned was a good ball player. He, uh, Tell me about the broadcasters you had with St. Louis Browns. Um, as, as I recall, Buddy Blander. Yeah, Kurt Gowdy was down in Oklahoma City when I played down in Oklahoma City, and either. 48 or 50. I don't remember. One of the greatest guys you'll ever meet. Uh, just uh, the only thing is, you don't want to be playing infield behind him on, in St. Louis on a Sunday doubleheader when it's 110 in the shade and no shade because he'll, he'll kill you. He's so slow and delivered. <laughs> and what we used to, we, you know, we'd walk back on the grass. So you get off that because you could see the heat coming up off that infield in St. Louis, you know. You walk back on the grass and just when he was getting ready to throw, then you'd walk up and go like this. And then it's, then you'd walk back on the grass again. <laughs> but he, he walked in the clubhouse one day. He's got a catfish that he's got held in the gills, you know. That, that thing must have had a head like that. And it was, you know, and it was, you know, touched, the tail touched the floor. And I said, how'd you catch that, Satch? Jugging. What do you mean, jugging? Well, he says you take a gallon jug and you, you tie a, a, a line in the, in the handle, handle with a hook and, and you throw them out. You know, you have five or six yeah. of them out. And you're, you stand around, you know, in, in your boat. And, and then when you see one go like this, you know, I, then you go over there, and he says, there, there isn't a fish in the world that can hold that thing down. I don't care how big it is. And uh, he said, after he gets all tired out, you just go over there, and you just take him in. <laughs> he, says, <laughs> he said, that's jugging. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he, was a, he was a great guy. He was a great guy. Could he still pitch? I mean, did you, did you sense there was some still greatness? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was... He was um, Somebody said that before the uh, colored people came into the big leagues, of course, they, they barnstormed in the, in the fall a lot with, the, with big league uh, guys. Somebody said that Joe DiMaggio said he was the best pitcher he ever faced. I don't know if that's true or not. Control. He had speed and control. Terrible curveball. Uh, no, no, you know, almost no, he throws, he just throws something up there, you know, <laughs> like a curveball. <laughs> but uh, but he, he had speed and control, and there's not a hitter in the world that doesn't have a weakness. And and he had such good control that he could just he could just kill you. He could just throw where you could not hardly hit him. And uh, and he was that good.